Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. All right, I've heard of face blindness before, but I don't know if I really understood it until today's interview. It's with journalist Sadie Dingfelder, who, yes, has face blindness, and she's got a new book looking into some of the research behind it called Do I Know You? And in this interview with NPR's Aisha Roscoe, they start talking about how we really don't know how other people perceive the world. Uh, I mean, there's a part early on where Sadie talks about not being able to picture anything in her head, but she also didn't realize that this was a thing other people could do. Anyway, they get to talking about all of that, the moral question of getting a diagnosis, and some interesting facts about uh, monkeys and butts. That's after the break. This message comes from NPR sponsor Sony Pictures Classics with daddy a new film starring Dakota Johnson as a young woman who hails a cab and Sean Penn as a seasoned cabbie, taking a journey of discovery on a trip from JFK to NYC. daddy is now playing only in theaters. This message comes from NPR sponsor Noom. Noom understands that not everyone is starting from the same place and takes that into account. With their first-ever cookbook, The Noom Kitchen, you can find 100 healthy and delicious recipes to promote better living. Available to buy now wherever books are sold. One day, Sadie Dingfelder had an epiphany in the grocery store. She spotted her husband with a jar of store-brand peanut butter. That hypocrite had just been extolling the virtues of homemade nut butters, so she plucked it out of his hands. Only that wasn't her husband. How did Sadie Dean Felder mistake a stranger for her husband and why? To find out, the freelance science journalist took a deep dive into her own brain. Her book is Do I Know You? And Sadie Dean Felder joins us now. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Before we get into the science of your brain, you always kind of knew that you were a bit quirky. Can you explain what it's like to be inside your head? Yeah, I had no idea, but it turns out that my experience of human consciousness is pretty unusual. I don't have an inner monologue. I can't visualize at all. I can't do mental time travel to moments from my past, and I can't tell the difference between faces very well. You can't visualize anything, so if I said visualize the beach right now, don't nothing pop up in your head. Nothing, and I (laughs) never realized other people could do it. The thing is, you don't grow up knowing that you're having this vastly different experience from other people. Like, you just thought maybe you were bad at faces. Right. That's what the secret message of my book title is. It's Do I Know You? Because it turns out that, you know, your husband, your best friend, your boss, they may be having a completely different conscious experience than you. And they may have completely different perceptions than you, even though we all live in the same objective environment. So you decided to find out why you have so much trouble with faces. Exactly how many scientific studies did you sign yourself up for? I know I've worked with five different teams of researchers (laughs) across the country. I should have counted the number of published studies I've been in now. So what did you find out about your brain? Well, it turns out that All humans have this thing called the fusiform face area, or the FFA, which is an almond-shaped chunk of brain matter just above your ears. And my FFA did not get the neural pruning that it needed when I was a baby. As a result, it's too thick. And so I didn't learn to specialize in human faces as well as other more neurotypical babies. Okay, so that was a lot of big words. So there's this area in your brain that as you get older, it kind of gets thinner to kind of focus a bit, and yours didn't. Exactly. And you know what else is really neat about this fusiform face area is that it seems to hold within it a very basic face template. Fetuses that are pretty on the older side, if you, like, shine lights two dots above a line— On the mother's stomach, the fetus will focus on the face-like pattern and track it, and it will not focus on an upside-down face pattern. Mm. And what I learned is that it's not so much that I'm bad at faces. It's that most humans are just astonishingly good. Most humans have a near photographic memory for faces and not for other types of objects. Like if I showed you a seashell 
and then I put that seashell in a lineup like 20 minutes later, you would probably have a lot of trouble picking it out. But you could do that with a face, no problem. You also (laughs) found out in the book that monkeys do something similar, (laughs) but with butts. Yeah, monkeys can tell their (laughs) friends from their foes by their, it's called the anal genital region. (laughs) But yeah, monkeys tell each other apart by their butts, basically. They can also tell by faces, though. They can do both. Humans can only do faces. And they tested it. Someone tested this. (laughs) You not only discovered that you had this face blindness, but there are other things that you found out, too, about yourself. Yeah. So once I figured out I was face blind and sort of accepted it, which took a minute, I was like, but why am I face blind? Because for most people, it's genetic. But I couldn't find anyone in my family who was also face blind. So I tracked it back, I think, to the fact that I'm stereo blind, too, which means that I do not see in 3D, which is something that I kind of knew about myself, but I hadn't really thought through before. But my world is so much flatter experientially than most people's world. And that's why I cannot catch a Frisbee or I get stressed out driving. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it seems like with all of these things, you're coming to realize that you have them now, but you've had them like all your life. What strategies did you realize you had been using to make up for the way that your brain works? As a reporter, what I do is I write at the top of every notepad. I always have written, write down sensory details. Mm. Because if I go into a situation and talk to scientists and see their lab, I'm going to remember the big picture things, but I'm not going to remember what it smelled like, what it sounded like, the color of the carpet. I mean, there's definitely some clear disadvantages to being a face-blind journalist. I have some funny stories of failing to recognize people that I've just been interviewing But on the positive side, I have a lifetime of experience just like making a quick connection with a stranger because I'm curious about them. I'm curious if maybe they are a good friend of mine or a stranger. (laughs) (laughs) With this book, when you're reading it, you start thinking like, do I have any of this now? Like, I see the world in 3D, but I feel like when I'm driving, I can't tell how far away things are from me. Yeah. Say if I'm trying to parallel park, it will take me like 20, 30 minutes and I'll just keep pulling up and I'll be like, I know I'm close this time and I'm still like five feet away. Do you know what that is? Is there a name for that? Yes. I mean, all of these things are on a spectrum and I just happen to really be pinning down the far side of the spectrum. I'm stereo blind, but you can definitely be stereo deficient. It's very common. Okay. People don't realize that vision is not just about acuity. It's also about, like, assessing depth. If you go to the optometrist, they can test it, and you can find out. And also, you can improve it. I got to try out these new, just barely FDA-approved therapies that are on virtual reality goggles where you play video games to Uh improve your stereo acuity. And mine got a lot better. And I put a key in my door on the first try for the first time in my life. (laughs) But see, then I'm afraid if I go in and try to see if I'm diagnosed and they're like, you're totally fine, then does that just mean I'm a bad driver? Yes. (laughs) Well, then that's the question. Do you want to have the diagnosis or do you not want to have the diagnosis? Do you think it's better to know or to not know? You know, I've been back and forth on this a few times, but I've landed on it's better to know. And most people who are face blind do find that it allows them to see their life with sudden clarity. It's almost like putting on glasses because all of a sudden, all of these mysteries that you've always been wondering about kind of click into place. For instance, I had a good friend who I thought moved away between middle school and high school. And it turned out she just got bangs. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> you just You didn't recognize her anymore. And she just thought you were like being standoffish. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's kind of tragic, and it's also a little funny. What is your relationship with your brain like today? Do you appreciate your brain for being unique and quirky? Uh, Are you resentful? Have you made peace with everything? Oh, I am just in awe of not only my brain, but everyone's brains. Even when they're not working at full capacity, the amount of calculus and, like, physics and All of these calculations that your brain is doing constantly behind the scenes, it's like a miracle a second. 
And I love learning more about the brain because it really makes you appreciate. You've got this like three pound marvel in your skull that we all just take for granted. That's Sadie Dingfelder. Her book is Do I Know You? A Face Blind Reporter's Journey into the Science of Sight, Memory, and Imagination. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great talking to you, Aisha. This message comes from NPR sponsor Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. So Mint Mobile is offering premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. To get your new phone plan for just $15, go to mintmobile.com slash switch. This message comes from NPR sponsor Lisa. Good sleep should come naturally. And with the new Natural Hybrid mattress, it can. A collaboration between Lisa and West Elm, the Natural Hybrid is expertly crafted from natural latex, natural wool, and certified safe foams to elevate your sleep sanctuary and support a greener tomorrow. Plus, every purchase helps fuel Lisa's work with shelters and those in need. Visit lisa.com to learn more. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com.